more examples, we want to find the magnitude and direction of the electric field 3 meters to the right of some positive charge. So what that's saying is, you know, here's my positive charge, and this is just a location in space, and I want to find the field strength there. It's like saying I want to find the gravitational field strength 2,000 meters above the surface of the Earth, right? Um, so you can just simply use the equation. It subs in, really, there's nothing else to it, okay? Um, the direction of the field means that because it's a positive charge creating the field, the field strength right here must be to the right. It must be away from that positive charge, right? Because if I stuck a positive charge right there, it would want to move away from there. So my answer is right. Okay? It's correct and it's right. In fact. Hard to know a good answer, but, but uh, if I look at the range of the numbers, 9 and then I multiply it by... So an exponent 9 multiplied by exponent negative 6 means I've got an exponent of 3 divided by an exponent of um, 1, right? Uh, 9 times 10 to the 1 it would be, so or 10 to the 0, sorry. So that makes sense that it's a number of, of that range. Okay, this one's a bit harder because now I'm looking at, it's just a location in space, so this z is just a, a spot. But this time I've got two charged objects creating the field. So it's like, you know, this 10, like this y, the charge at y just disappeared. There still would be a field at z due to x, right? But there's also a field at z due to just y. So it means I have to do a vector sum, and that's what I have written down here, right? The field here is going to be the sum uh, due to x and due to y. And again, it's a neat one. You say, well, you know, we look at things like direction and all that, like, you know, the field at Z would be off to the right due to X because it's a positive charge, but due to Y it would be to the left because if I stuck a positive charge at Z it would want to move to the left towards Y, but it also would want to move to the right away from X. And then trying to guess which way when you make a prediction on your answer is hard because it's closer to Y, but X is a bigger charge. So it's interesting to see what we'll get. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, but you just do this vector, right? You do the same thing like we did before. You decide um, on a positive direction. I call, as usual, I call right positive, and you basically say I'm going to find the field at z due to the first one, and then due to due to y. You know, treating them separately. Uh, make sure I use the right signs, and then add them up and, and get an answer. If you need to pause, please do so to write. But I'm going to jump right in to the answer. So uh, it's due to the field at Z is due to um, the field due to, Q, to X and the field due to Y. Now the positive and the negative, I threw those signs in there because if you look at the picture again, if I stuck a positive charge at Z, it would move away from X because X is positive, right? So it would move in the positive direction, but it would move towards Y, which is the negative direction. And that's why I chose those two signs. Okay? Stick in the numbers. Uh, notice the distance, by the way. Don't get fooled by that. <laughs> right? The distance from Z to X is 0.75. Um, yeah, sub in the numbers. And you get your answer. It turns out that it would move to the left. So that so the closeness, the closeness of Y sort of overcomes the large charge at X because it does want to move to the left. And again, it's a big number, which I've told you, they're often big numbers like that. See how I put it in, by the way? 50 times 10 to the negative 6, that's that microcoulomb business. That's it. That's a hard one. Um, parallel plates, right. So this is a, an aside, a side topic, and they come up fairly frequently. And when you make up your um, formula sheet for this unit, I do suggest you, you sort of cordon off an area for equations that are specifically related to parallel plates. Parallel plates are a very common application of electric fields. Excuse me. Um, the reason is 
Yeah, all I, if you take a look at this, by the way, you know, I just stole this picture off something, but you know, I, this is somebody just actually bolted a couple plates in place, but what they have is they have, um, charge moving into these plates. And so they build up a charge in this case, you know, like if I look at this picture, it's like I have a positive charge and a negative charge, right? And that's probably what's going on here. And then there's this gap in between, but because of the opposite charges, there's a great electric field there in the sense that if I, if this is the positively charged plate and I stuck a proton somehow or a positive charged sphere on that plate, it would fly across to the other side, right? So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of um, potential energy inside those plates. And the, and the plates get used quite frequently in, in uh, you know, lots of different applications. Well, a battery is just a set of parallel plates, quite frankly, but uh, um, capacitors with short store, store charge use parallel plates. Particle accelerators use plates. Um, we'll see a few different examples as we go through, but uh, you know they, they have some very special properties. There's special rules we can use for them because it's sort of a unique thing where you have these plates and are used sufficiently enough that we take time to you know to make up its own section on the, on the formula sheet. Um, so key thing that an assumption that gets made is that you end up with a uniform electric field between the plates. So normally you might say, well, the, 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 the field right here would be much greater than the field right in the middle because it's so close to that positive charge. But actually we say it's a uniform field, okay? These lines here represent the field lines. You notice how they're sort of circular. It's called bunching around the edges, but from a calculation point of view, a grade 12 physics point of view, we pretend the field is just straight down, you know, from positive to negative. Because if I stuck a positive charge right here, it would fly straight down, right? Um, yeah, so the main application we do in the class is looking at a, a particle acceleration. And, and, and the reason is, you know, if I stuck a positive charge here, I could accelerate it quite a bit. It could sit there with no, no speed at all. But by the time it got to this negative plate, it would be flying, right? So that's one reason we use them. And we'll go through the, when we do the calculations of that, we'll wait a little bit before we do. But when we do, um, sometimes it looks like this. And what will happen is, in an application, they can make sort of a small hole right here. So this will have enough speed when it gets here, it'll just fly right through. And, you know, then you can have um, you can have an accelerated particle on this side. The other thing is, sometimes or often you'll have um, uh, the particle accelerators do it this way. They've got two sets of parallel plates. And say you have some horizontal speed this way. And then you make sure it enters the plate sort of close to the positive side, if it's a positive charge object. And then it'll accelerate, it'll, it'll go in the same speed horizontally. Nothing's causing it to speed up horizontally, but it will accelerate and leave on an angle that's greater than the original speed. And this actually is a lot like projectile motion, right? Horizontally, it's got no acceleration, but in downward, so to speak, it does. Anyways, the calculations related to these like that are not necessary yet. You don't need to worry about them. But some assumptions I wanted to get, you know, get out now early in the unit is you can assume the field strength is equal. Um, you know, we say the gap between the plates is small enough that we don't increasing decreasing gap will have no effect on that field strength. And the only way we can affect the field strength is by changing the charge put on the plates. Okay. Um, so just a quick example with parallel plates. Say we have um, the electric field midway between a pair of oppositely charged parallel plates is that should that should read three times ten to the exponent three, so three thousand newtons per coulomb. And it says find the magnitude of the field midway between this point and the positively charged plate. And the answer to A is just keeping in mind that the field strength we assume is constant, so it's three thousand still. And then it says in part B. In the parallel plate apparatus above, what would the electric field strength become if I removed half of the charge and I and I decreased the distance between them? Well, having the distance or changing the distance between the plates means nothing, but having the charge will have the field strength. Okay? So the field strength is directly proportional to the charge. So if you decrease the charge on the plates, then you decrease the field strength. Okay? Um, but changing the distance has no, no effect at all. Okay, so that's just a little introduction to parallel plates. That's yep. Yeah, that's it for this this video, and we'll just stop right now.